I'm sure that most of you guys have heard the term September Heisman. The September Heisman refers to a player who has an insane start to their season, but eventually flames out and goes back to normal. There have been multiple players like this over the last few years, but today I want to highlight one player who is both a September Heisman and was supposed to be the next great Michigan quarterback. This video is going way back in time, so some of the newer viewers may not know much about him, but Tate Forcier was the next great Wolverine quarterback, and his first couple games in a Wolverine uniform made some believe he could win the Heisman and be one of the best in school history. Unfortunately, from there, he would flame out and would barely play any more college football. He's seen as one of the bigger what-ifs of this century of football for Michigan, and in today's video, I'm going to introduce you to who Tate Forcier is, go through his insane rise and fall at Michigan, and what ultimately happened to him. But before we get started, be sure to leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new and love college football content, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now, let's get started and talk about what happened to Tate Forcier. Four weeks into his college career, he was on the top right corner of Sports Illustrated. One year later, he was gone. Forcier is one of the most interesting players in Michigan history, as he could have been an amazing talent like Johnny Manziel or Baker Mayfield, but unfortunately, many believe his ego got in the way and was a humongous what if. Going back in time, Robert Forcier was always supposed to be a quarterback, but he didn't like his name, so he eventually started going by Tate. The three brothers at the time were nicknamed the QB Force, and they were groomed to be signal callers from the very beginning. Tate was homeschooled and spent all of his time training to be a quarterback, even if he didn't always like it. His brother Jason ended up playing at Stanford, and his other brother Chris played at UCLA. Tate recalls playing football with both his father and older brothers when he was only four or five, as he would join them in sprints. He said, quote, I hated it, but my father got me to where I am, and I love him for it. When he was eight or nine years old, Tate started to hone in on his passing mechanics, improved his strength, conditioning, and sports psychology, making him somewhat of a quarterback prodigy. He was trained by Mark Marjanovic, the infamous dad of his quarterback son, Todd. Could Tate end up putting it all together with the guidance of Mark? Hopefully. His high school coach said, quote, I didn't know him when he was younger, but he was born and bred to be a quarterback. He's embraced the position of quarterback since day one. His dad didn't allow him to get in trouble, as apparently he woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning, grabbed a protein shake, went for a run, came back, and went to school. After that, he'd have a workout with a private instructor, and then did some homework and practice, and went to bed. As a junior at Scripps Ranch High School, he passed for 2,387 yards and 21 touchdowns. He passed the ball at 77%, and like the rest of his family, offers started to fall in, and many believed he'd be the best of the three brothers. As a senior at Scripps Ranch, he eventually threw for 3,424 yards and 23 touchdowns, completing 64% of his passes, while rushing for nearly 800 yards and 12 touchdowns as well. 4CA was one of the top recruits in the country, but where was he going to end up going? Well, Michigan had missed out on Terrell Pryor in 2008, so in 2009, they needed a quarterback who could run Rich Rodriguez's offense. The Wolverines had two quarterbacks signed in Kevin Newsom and Shavadrick Beaver, but both would later decommit. Eventually, Forcier began to generate headlines as he was consistently dropping Michigan amongst the schools he was interested in and wanted to visit. After a terrific performance at the Nike Elite 11 camp, he found himself as a hot commodity and Michigan fans were asking themselves if the staff had jumped the gun on their two commits and they wanted 4CA instead of them. Eventually, as I said, those two quarterbacks decommitted and they ended up taking Tate. He picked Michigan over Florida, Oregon, and Penn State. And I guess Michigan sold the deal in their 2008 opener. He said, quote, I was talking with my brother and telling him how much I liked it and talked with my dad about it and they both asked me the same question, is this the place? He said he had a good feeling after most of the schools he went to, but Michigan had a different feeling, and eventually he walked into Coach Rodriguez's office and gave him a full commitment. A few weeks later, they pushed Beaver out the door and he flipped to Tulsa, but they weren't done adding quarterbacks as Denard Robinson eventually pledged to the Wolverines as well. In one year, four different four-star quarterbacks were signed to be the future of Rich Rod's program, but 4CA was the guy everyone was excited about. One scout said, quote, we would describe him as a passer who can run the spread and read option with ease. Mechanically, he is similar to Jeff Garcia, and he's a riverboat gambler who finds a way to get the job done. According to 24-7 Sports, 4CA was a four-star recruit, the number four dual-threat quarterback, and the 120th best player in the class of 2009. So, how would he end up doing? Well, 2009 was going to be an interesting year. They were coming off a 3-9 season, and during the 2009 spring game, Michigan fans had come to see Tate. 
He was Rich Rodriguez's first prized recruit, and there were huge expectations placed on his shoulders. 2009 was Rich Rodriguez's second year, and fans were begging for them to play Tate instead of Nick Sheridan. There were two freshman hopefuls fighting for the job, but 4CA would beat out Denard Robinson. Eventually, Tate won the job and became the third true freshman to start an opener at quarterback in school history. In his first game against Western Michigan, he'd go 13 of 20 for 179 yards and three touchdowns. It was a great start, but number 18 Notre Dame would come to town the following week. In that game, 4CA ended up making a crazy fourth down conversion and then threw a game-winning touchdown pass to beat the Irish, setting off insane hype. He was 2-0 with a win over a top 25 team and a rival, and he was named the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week, the Davey O'Brien Quarterback of the Week, and the AT&T All-American Player of the Week. He would continue his hot streak as he would help them beat Eastern Michigan, and then had three touchdowns and a comeback win over Indiana. 4CA was now 4-0, and it seemed like he was the next big thing. Unfortunately, September would come to an end, and so would pretty much the end of his career. The last eight games of the 2009 season were not great. He struggled to mount comebacks against both Michigan State and Iowa, and he lost a lot of his mojo and the trust of his teammates. His best performance the rest of the year was probably his two touchdown performance against Purdue, but it was a rough end as he'd end up losing seven of his last eight games. He finished the year with 2,050 yards, 13 touchdowns, and 10 picks. He was still named a freshman All-American honorable mention because of his first few games, but the praise must have got to his head as his ego apparently got really bad and with his job on the line, he didn't play very well in the spring either. By the time fall camp began for the 2010 season, he was practicing without wings on his helmet, which was a punishment by Rich Rod, and it looked like Denard Robinson was going to take over. Eventually, he did end up getting taken over, and was actually third string behind Devin Gardner as well. In their season opener in 2010 against UConn, everything was seemingly over for Tate, as while the rest of his teammates celebrated a win, Tate looked like he had lost, and he spent most of the game sitting on the bench with a towel between his shoulders or wrapped around his head. He apparently said, quote, All you need to know is I'm out. In 2010, he'd play in eight games, throwing for 597 yards and four touchdowns. This was because Denard Robinson had multiple injuries, but after a whirlwind and a crazy couple months at Michigan, there was speculation he was going to transfer, but he also had academic issues. There was also a rumor that he skipped a team meeting, and as Brady Hoke was hired to be the new head coach at Michigan, 4CA went out the door. In two years, he threw for 2,647 yards, 17 touchdowns, and 14 picks. And while he had a great September of 2009, his ego was apparently through the roof, and he didn't get along well with coaches or teammates, and obviously didn't play well on the field. In terms of what was next for him, he would choose the ACC. Tate decided he would transfer to play at Miami under new head coach Al Golden, and when he became eligible in 2012, Many were wondering if he could get that fresh start he so desperately needed. But unfortunately, it would not end up working out. Despite signing financial aid papers, he decided not to go to Miami and found another school. On July 26 of 2011, he announced he had committed to play football at San Jose State. He would have been eligible to play there in 2012, and he said, quote, It felt right. I loved the coaches and felt comfortable with them. I really believe I can help that team. This was a huge get for coach Mike McIntyre, who later coached at Colorado, but he would have to sit out the 2012 season, and nothing would end up happening with Tate. By the end of January of 2012, he withdrew from classes at San Jose State, and apparently academics were a factor in his decision to leave. His college football career was over at this point, and he decided he was going to play in the CFL, but after one exhibition game, he went 0 for 4 and was cut. As of 2015, he then became an offensive coordinator at a local high school, and it looks like as of right now, he's a football trainer. I couldn't find a lot of info on what he's up to now, but Tate 4CA is one of the biggest what-ifs in Michigan history. He arguably had the best start to, for a freshman in Michigan history, but seemingly his ego got to him, and all that losing and drama ended up breaking him. This seems to be the case with a lot of quarterback prodigies, as when they spend their whole life winning and competing at something, eventually when things don't go their way, they end up falling apart. I'm not saying that Tate was necessarily a failure or anything like that, but after a hot start to his Michigan career, the bar was extremely high, he couldn't live up to it, seemingly he unraveled. It's super hard to be a college football quarterback, yet alone a freshman with that much hype. It's unfortunate to see that it didn't work out at San Jose State either, but hopefully he learned some lessons from it, and I'm sure he's helping a lot of other quarterbacks deal with the pressures and he can give his personal testimony and help the next generation of quarterbacks. But what do you guys think? If you're a Michigan fan, what do you think happened to Tate Forcier? Who is the biggest what if in school history? Be sure to let me know down below. 
Let me know what player I can cover in my next video. Leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace. Thank you.